Hello and welcome to the Starting a Podcast for Beginners five-part series. If you haven't seen the previous three videos, then take a look in the description below for those. Stage four is where you're going to be planning and recording your first podcast content. So that includes a trailer episode, sort of an episode zero. It'd be a short trailer episode around one minute long that you can use for promotion. And then, of course, your first couple of episodes. Always good to start with at least two episodes just to have them in the bank so you can get those scheduled and that you know you're going to be off to a flying start when you launch. So I'm going to show you in this video how I put together episodes and the trader episode. But before we get started on that, we need to talk about equipment. So whichever kind of podcast that you're going to be creating, whether it's a solo podcast or an interview podcast, there's going to be a few pieces of equipment that you'll need. And maybe you already have some equipment, but we're just going to go over what kind of equipment I recommend in terms of microphones and things. So first, let's talk about microphones. If you want to record your voice for your podcast, of course, you need a microphone. I'm sure you already have a built in microphone in your phone or maybe your webcam or if you've got a headset and you can use these if you don't have any budget to buy any more equipment. It's not going to sound fantastic. It's not going to sound super professional using built-in mics like these. But again, if you don't have the budget, then the most important thing is getting started. You can always upgrade your audio setup going forward. But if you do have a little bit of money to spend on a microphone, I'm going to show you what kinds of microphones I recommend. You don't have to spend a huge amount of money on a microphone to get a really professional sound. And the microphone that I recommend to most of my clients is the Audio-Technica 80. 2100x it's a dynamic microphone which means it's not very sensitive it picks up your voice from very close so you have to have it quite close to your mouth but it means that even if you're not recording in like a professional studio space it's much less sensitive than some other microphones to echoes in the room and, and noise and and things going on next door. A lot of podcasting blogs and things I find tend to recommend condenser microphones like the Blue Yeti. They're much more sensitive. They pick up a lot more of the room sound and things. So for people without professional recording studio spaces, it's not the best option. The other great thing about the Audio-Technica is that it's a USB microphone. You can see at the bottom there, it's got a USB port, which means you can plug it straight into your computer and it will give you a solid signal. It will record a good level of volume for your voice just straight out the box, plugging straight into your computer. One drawback of USB microphones is that with a lot of recording software, you can only record one at a time. So if you want to record two people in the same room, if you've got a co-hosted podcast, then maybe you both have a laptop or some other kind of device, a tablet that you can both plug a USB mic into. Or another option is that you don't use USB mics and instead you find a microphone with an XLR connector. XLR connected microphones need to be plugged into an audio interface, which is then plugged into your computer. So it's another piece of equipment you have to buy, but a lot of audio interfaces allow you to plug in more than one microphone at once. They also tend to get you better sound quality, but it is a bit more expensive, this setup, and a little bit more advanced. But for most podcasters, a basic USB microphone is a good place to start. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description to all of these options and all of the equipment that I recommend. Aside from your microphone, I recommend picking up a boom arm. A boom arm is a stand that you can connect your mic to and then you connect the stand to the desk and it allows you to position the microphone directly in front of your mouth. This will allow you to get the best sound possible and also rather than putting your microphone directly on your desk, uh, which can pick up a lot of taps and typing and, and shuffles and things like that, the boom arm helps mitigate those sounds. If your microphone doesn't come with one, ideally you also need a pop filter or a wind filter. I've got one here, it's just a foam ball that fits on top of the microphone and it stops your microphone from picking up these windy P sounds, plosives they're called. Nasty breathy sounds that can be picked up and they can be hard to remove. And then you're also going to need some kind of software on your computer for recording your podcast and for editing it. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So jump back into your planner or whatever you're using to plan your podcast and note down any equipment that you'll be needing to buy. So you can see here, I've already got a microphone that I'm using. Um, and then we've got a list of the, the other equipment that you'll need. So headphones, 
most people are going to have some kind of headphones or earphones but if you don't that's something you'll need to pick up and as we as we talked about the, the boom arm for your microphone the pop filter and then any recording software so if you're recording interview episodes for example you've got the option of tr using zoom or an online recording service like Riverside. Both of these have free options, but if they don't meet your requirements in terms of how long you can record and things like that, then you might need to note down and, and make a note of how much that's going to cost you for any of these services. Or if you're, use, if you're doing solo episodes and you want to use a paid uh, piece of software, and we'll talk about some of the options there in just a moment, um, but you'll need to, again, make a note of how much that's going to cost and one bonus tip if you're on a low budget you can of course look for some of this stuff secondhand so if you look on ebay or facebook marketplace places like that there's plenty of podcasters who have started podcasting and then decided it's not for them or they didn't have time or whatever so they're selling their equipment and these microphones tend to last a long time so you could pick up one secondhand and often save or get a better microphone for your money. So speaking of software, let's talk about how and where you'll be recording your podcast. So again, I've got a few options here, the most common options. How will you be recording your episodes? If you're recording an online interview, obviously you'll need some kind of online calling software. The two options that I recommend, as mentioned, are either Zoom or Riverside. This is because they have a free option for those who want a low budget, but as a paid piece of software, it's, they're also both really useful. Zoom is a little bit easier to get to grips with um, for some of your guests. If they're not particularly tech savvy, they might be already familiar with Zoom. And if you use the right settings, then you can still get a great quality recording. Riverside is another great online recording option. It records in higher quality video and audio. Um, so you get better results generally, but it is a little bit trickier to get set up as it, at the time of recording it only works on Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. So if your guest isn't using either of those two browsers or you're not comfortable with asking them to download one of those two, then it might not be the right option for you. If you're recording a solo podcast or you just want to record your audio separately locally on your computer anyway to get that full quality uninterrupted by any kind of network issues or anything you would you'll also want to be recording to some kind of audio recording software locally on your computer now if you've seen the previous video in this series you'll have seen that i used audacity to record the intro and outro which is a free digital audio workstation piece of audio recording software free on windows or mac you can also edit on the software reaper is also another great option which is free to use for 60 days and after that it's a reasonably low price to own the software outright it's very similar to audacity it's just a little bit more advanced you've got better mixing and editing functionality if you want to take that role on yourself if you're not outsourcing things and you want to make sure that your episodes sound as good as they possibly can of course if you're recording in a professional recording studio space then you won't need to worry about any of this and again just have a think about whether you're going to be outsourcing the editing or you're going to be editing your episodes yourself of course if you start editing your episodes yourself there's no harm in giving it a go and if you find that it takes too long or you're struggling you can always outsource it at a later date now let's put your podcast trailer together so it doesn't have to be long only around a minute or so up to about three minutes um, is enough to get your message across of what the podcast is, what problems it solves, who the podcast is for, and also introducing yourself as the host. And then adding a call to action at the end, asking people to subscribe to the show. Your podcast trailer has a couple of different uses. Firstly, you're going to be using it up until launch day to promote your podcast. It will tell people why they should be listening. And again, also get them to subscribe so that they see that first episode on launch day. And then after your launch, it's also useful because on your podcast host, which we'll be looking at in the next stage, you can set this podcast trailer as a trailer. So it comes up at the top of the feed on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and everything. And those who are looking for a new podcast, they don't have to invest the time to listen to a full episode. They can listen to your one minute trailer and know if the podcast is for them. So let's have a look at the script that I wrote for my podcast trailer. 
Uh, and as as I go through, just have a think about how you can script your podcast trailer to get all these points in there and just maybe jot some bullet points down of the main talking points of the trailer and you can always flesh things out later on uh, and make it really persuasive to get people to listen. So this is what my trailer sounds like. Are you ready to take your podcast to the next level? Do you want to leverage your podcast so that you can achieve your goals? So right from the beginning, these are the problems that the podcast solves. So at the end of the day, any podcast is solving a problem. We spoke about that in stage one. What is the problem that your podcast solves? So for this, for my podcast, it's people that want to take their podcast to the next level um, and also achieve their goals using their podcast. So next, whether you're a seasoned podcast looking to grow your show, again, reinforcing the problem that it solves, um, or you're eager to launch your first episode, you're in the right place. So whoever's listening to this trailer, hopefully they'll be thinking, yeah, I want to grow my show or yeah, I'm, I want to launch my first episode um, and then they'll know they're in the right place. Hi, I'm Joe FD, founder and chief engineer at podcast production company Claricast. Um, that's just a, a very quick introduction to myself and some information showing why they should bother listening to me. Welcome to Podcasting Amplified, the podcast where each week we explore the journey to success through podcasting. Um, and so that's detailing the the frequency of the episode releases. Uh, each episode features an engaging conversation with a passionate podcaster. That gives the listener an idea of what kind of format the podcast will be in. So it's obviously an interview podcast. Um, and then I put more information in there about what they can get from the podcast and why as well. You've got to get that why in there. Uh, so not just, you know, we can help you do this, but we can help you do this so that, and then their more external goals and how your podcast is going to do that. And you can use some of the wording from well, from the, the beginning of the planner stage one, where we talked about uh, your goals and your ideal listener and things. So you want to keep your ideal listener in mind that's who you want to be persuading to click through. And then we've got join us on the journey of discovery, connection and transformation. Your podcasting success story begins here. Just using some powerful language there to get people excited about listening. And then the call to action at the end. Subscribe to Podcasting Amplified in your podcast app of choice and start unlocking the limitless potential of your podcast when Podcasting Amplified launches on such and such date. Um, so just drop your date your launch date in there or if you want to to have an evergreen trailer that will last even after your podcast has launched without having to update that date you can just say um, subscribe to your podcast name on your podcast step of choice we've already talked about call to actions i wouldn't bother getting any extra call to actions in there i've heard podcast trailers where it will ask people to subscribe and then it asks people to share it with their network and then it asks people to, you know, leave a review once the first episode is launched. It's too much and it will just stop people from taking any action whatsoever. I don't think it's right to be asking people to share it with their network when they, you haven't even given them any value yet. If they love your podcast and they keep coming back for more, then they'll share it of their own accord. But for, for the trailer, you just want people to click follow and click subscribe so they don't hear your trailer and they disappear and then forget about it. And then have a think about anything else that you need to put in place before your podcast launches. So for me, that was a Trello board for episode planning. If you want to set up something like in a project management software like Trello or uh, you know a Google Sheets doc, something like that, so that you can plan your episodes, then go for it. I also wanted to compile a questions list, a list of 20 or so questions that I can dip into um, should the sort of conversation run dry or, you know, just to keep the conversation moving forward. So I do suggest if you're doing an interview podcast, writing down some general questions that you can ask any guest. Uh, write booking email and guest handout document. So I also put together this primer. This isn't something that's essential, but if you're booking guests, giving out giving them out a, a pdf or something just a link to a google doc or whatever just detailing uh what they need to prepare for the interview giving them maybe a, some ideas or questions they might be asked and then asking them thanking them and asking them to share the episode once it's out it'd be nice it's nice to have something like this that you can share with guests easily uh whenever you book a new guest and then also i put together a release form this basically is a waiver 
that tells your guests that you have rights to use their podcast, that podcast recording with them uh, in, its, in perpetuity after the recording. So some people don't bother with this. I do this with every episode just to be safe. I mean, I trust my guests, but it's just good to have that in, in writing um, to prevent any issues in the future. And then I also wanted to book four interviews with with some guests. Like I said, you want at least two episodes recorded and edited before the release, but ideally you'd have more than that. Four is a good number, which is what I aim for. If you're producing a solo podcast, if you're not recording interviews, then obviously you won't need to be booking interviews, but you would need to be planning out your first few episodes, what topics you're going to be talking about. I don't recommend scripting out episodes in, in, in their entirety. It doesn't result in particularly engaging episodes and it doesn't help you get better at being a speaker. So at least if you're recording solo episodes, I recommend using bullet points, uh, but not fully scripting them out. And then once you've got everything in place, you've got your trailer script, uh, you've got your interviews or your uh, episodes prepared, it's time to actually go ahead and record them. So we did have a look at recording audio in the last stage. I'm just going to revisit the different software that you can use to record your podcast episodes and just show you a quick setup depending on your situation. So if you're recording interview episodes, of course, Zoom is always an option. Your guests will most likely be familiar with how to use it. You can just set up a meeting with them by scheduling and typing out the details and then when you add an email address and click save, it will send them a link. And if you use any kind of calendar software like Calendly, you can integrate that. So when they book a call with you, it automatically sets up a Zoom call. The, the reason why I suggest Zoom as a good basic interview option is because you can record speakers separately. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below if you choose to use Zoom that goes through all the settings you'll need to use, but just a couple of the important ones to get you started. If you go onto your audio, you can make sure that you've got your speakers and your microphone set correctly. Uh, in when, when you've got some voice coming through, you'll see that there. And then you can set original sound for musicians on. If you use the zoom background noise removal, it's going to reduce the quality. You're better off using the original sound, um, which you need to make sure that you turn on for each, each call that you have. And then you or your editor can remove any noise afterwards if if any is apparent. Um, and secondly, if you go into recording through the settings, just make sure that you've got record a separate audio file of each participant checked. That means you'll get an audio file for your recording and you'll also get one for the guest, which means you can edit separately. You can remove any interruptions or things that are only on one side of the conversation. And if you're recording video as well, just make sure you go into your video settings and make sure HD is checked if that's an option for you and you've got the right webcam set up as well. And then on the day of your episode recording, you both click on your link and you'll be brought into your session and you just need to make sure that you do click record there um, between, before each recording. Record to this computer and make sure that you've got your audio and your video started. There are alternatives to Zoom that get you higher quality recordings. Riverside is one of them, as I mentioned earlier, and it has a free plan, which does let you record as much audio and video as you want. But after the, the first two hours of audio recording, you have to record everything to one track and videos will be watermarked. If you do want to give Riverside a go, I've left a link in the description to a video that I put together to show you exactly how to record your podcast using the software. Alternatively, as we said, if you're recording a solo podcast episode, you can just use a digital audio workstation, audio recording software like Audacity, uh, which is a great free option locally on your computer. Again, as with your intro and outro and trailer, you can just make sure that your recording device is set to your microphone. So if it will come up if you're using the Audio-Technica, for example, it will come up saying uh, ATR 2100X or Audio-Technica and then just hit record and then you're going to be recording your podcast episode in full and then uh, you click stop afterwards and you'll be able to edit that, edit out any spaces um, or mistakes or ums and ahs and all that sort of stuff directly in the same software. Again, if you want more detail on how to use Audacity and various other pieces of software to record, edit and mix your podcast, then find a link in the description below.
And I also want to go over a few recording tips to keep in mind before you hit record on every episode. So I've got these detailed in the podcast launch planner I shared with you. When you're setting up to record, you want to make sure that your microphone is set up on the mic stand or boom arm, of course, plugged into your computer as well. And you might need to, when you first buy the microphone, install any driver that it comes with. If it comes with a disc or it comes with a little card that says to go on the website to install the driver, just make sure you do that for the smoothest operation. And then make sure you're sitting comfortably and positioned correctly in front of the microphone. Each microphone is different. For the Audio Technica that I mentioned earlier, you want the ball end of the microphone pointing directly at your mouth. Uh, and you want to leave around two hand widths or around six inches gap between your mouth and the microphone to prevent plosives. And when you're recording, you don't want to be uncomfortable and like sitting still, completely still like a robot. But you do want to try and keep that rough roughly that sort of distance during your recordings to avoid the uh, the volume from dipping in and out just like this and it's quite hard to fix that in the edit so just try and keep relatively still make sure that you've removed any jingly jewelry or anything else that could be picked up in the recording make sure that you've got your headphones on and if you notice that your guest if you're recording an interview if your guest doesn't have headphones on then ask them to do the same to avoid their speakers bleeding back into their microphone and and you get in this horrible echo sound which is pretty much impossible to remove after the fact so it's something to keep an eye on Either the microphone or the software you're using should also have a meter showing you how loud you're recording. So you don't want it to be really, really loud um, hitting the red because it means you're going to get some nasty distortion being picked up on your recording. You also don't want it to be super low. So just adjust the volume on your microphone itself or in whatever software you're using to make sure that your input is hovering somewhere around the middle. And then, of course, after you've recorded your episode, make sure that you save your episode in the highest quality files possible. So for audio, that's going to be a .wav or .wav file. And for video, you're probably going to be using an MP4 file. If it's an HD 1080p camera, then use the HD setting um, if you've got it. And then let's check back in on our checklist and check off the things that we've done in this stage. So we've got our equipment and set it all up, recorded our trailer and at least two episodes. And then in terms of promotional content, this is going to be dependent on what you decided in stage two to do for your marketing. So if you're recording anything other than the trailer, um, like just little video shorts, or if you're putting together any imagery or anything like that to share on Instagram, then you can do that and check that off too. For my podcast, I shared this image on Instagram and, and across other social media, just detailing the main uh, the, the main problem solve on of the podcast and then when it's launched and when pe where people can subscribe to it as well. So after you've gone through this, you should have an episode or two and your trailer recorded. You've got everything set up. You know what your podcast will be and who it will be for. In the next video, in stage five, we're going to be setting up your podcast so that it will be distributed out to the world on launch day. And let me know in the comments section below what kind of podcast are you recording? Don't forget to subscribe to get that last video or it will be in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.